What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHO Bulls Post Game. Coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck Bulls underscore Peck, my guy, Big Day. Bam! Bam! B A W L Sports. Our power producer on the controls is Joey Spathis at Joey Spathis. Our guy, Will the Goat, will join us later on in tonight's post game live from the United Center where we just watched the Bulls fall to the Atlanta Hawks. 113 101 was the final. Um, thank you for joining us, Bulls fans. If you're hanging out on YouTube, one, do us a favor, hit that like, do it right now before you forget. And two, throw us your thoughts on tonight's game. We'll get to as many comments as we can. Throw us a super chat if you're feeling generous tonight. We appreciate those as well. Yes, we do. Um, There's one. I am so goddamn sick There's two. of watching this same crappy team. Crap, I, crappity crap. I mean... We just ran through it towards the end of this one, Dave. We did. The stretch of five games mm -hmm. from the past week and change. We watched the Bulls lose to the Wizards. The Wizards. We watched the Bulls beat the Pacers by 20. Smash. We, lost, we watched the Bulls lose to the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets. Then we watched the Bulls beat the Timberwolves yeah, the for the Nets. second time this season. Two times. Sweet. And we just watched the Bulls lose to the Atlanta Hawks. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> loss, win, loss, win, loss. These five games tell you everything you need to know as a Bulls fan mm. about what this team is, which is maddeningly mediocre, uh -huh. frustratingly inconsistent, uh -huh. and more often than not, when they win, it's because they barely win on the margins on a night when they shoot well enough on their modest attempts from deep. On the nights when they lose, they lose because their opponents run them off the floor with threes. <laughs> happening as Brooklyn? Yeah. Just happening in tonight. Yeah. The Bulls shot, what, 2.8% from three? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration, but uh, 25. 25%? Yeah. On 28 attempts. Yeah. Seven of 28. Meanwhile, Atlanta, 19 of 40. Ooh. The Bulls lose the three point battle by 36 points tonight. Mm. After they lost the three point battle to Brooklyn by 48. Mm. An even more hilarious number, but I, it is the same shit all the time. I am so freaking sick of it. Hey, the Bulls won points in the paint tonight. Hey, the Bulls doubled up Atlanta in offensive rebounds tonight and defensive rebounds were a wash. Hey, the Bulls won fast break points tonight. Hey, the Bulls won points off turnovers tonight and it doesn't fucking matter because this team can't shoot threes. God, I'm sick of it. I have six more to go. Thank freaking God. Six more to go because I cannot watch this crap anymore. <laughs> oh, man. My man be so bad. <sighs> go ahead and breathe, Matt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take your time. How you doing, Take Dave? <laughs> full of joy, actually. But, man, I'm not laughing at your frustration. I'm just laughing at how it's coming out. Um, your frustration is understandable and everything you're saying is correct. And this is why Bulls fans have kind of have felt all season long. Um, it's upsetting. It's maddening. Every word that you just used. It's stuck in the middle. It's no, that's a lot of hats. Thanks, Joe. It's stuck in the middle. It's, it's no kind of move to get out of the middle. Uh, it's, it's just, I'm right there. And it's not even just that. It's the comfortability of the front office with being just stuck right there and saying, we're cool right here. It's all right. Hey, Julia. Matt's angry. Um, and I think that's what's extra frustrating is we all see the problem and we all know the problem, which is what you just mentioned with the three-point shooting. Shooting and defending the three-point shot has been an Achilles heel for the Bulls and one that was preventable. I shouldn't even call it an Achilles heel. It's something that's preventable. Uh, something they could have taken care of that they refused to take care of and do something about. And 
they get us to the point where Matt is throwing hats everywhere and everybody's so freaking angry. It's upsetting, man. Like, I really don't have any other words. Than that. It's upsetting to watch. As, as much as I was kind of joking in, in pregame about how serious tonight's game was. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't give a shit yeah, about this playing tournament. You checked that a while ago. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that's why I just boiled over right now. Because I've been apathetic about this team for a month, mm -hmm. if not more. If not more. And it's just so funny to me and also fury, infuriating. Like, as much as I might not think that this game matters mm -hmm. from where I am as a Bulls fan right now, to them it should. Yeah. Huge game. Mm-hmm. Seventh to last game of the regular season against a team that is chasing you yeah. closely yeah. to determine who gets home court mm -hmm. for a winner go home pre playoff playoff game. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, that is flat effort tonight. The Bulls could not get anything going offensively. Obviously, it doesn't help when the Bulls are cold from three like they are too often. Yeah. But a lack of urgency yeah. seemed just rampant throughout that entire squad tonight in a way that is baffling when you know what was at stake. And it feels like something that has been continuous through the season. This isn't the first time we said, man, this is a big game for the Bulls, and they've come out flat and laid eggs. We've seen it often. And then in games where we're like, well, I guess it's just how they feel, they win by 30. And we were like, what do y'all – I'm very confused about how y'all feel and what do y'all want to do. And when I say them, I don't just mean to play. I mean, it's, it's a failure on everybody's part, you know, from coaching for, to front office. Like, it's a failure on everybody's part. It's, but especially on the coaching and the players, how they come out. Because this, again, is a home game. <laughs> You're at the house. You know, all the momentum is always swung your way. This is not, and, again, this is not the first time. That this has happened this way, where the whole momentum has swung your way and it has been your thing. But it's also not the first time that they have underperformed in that situation. So it leads you to have no belief in them, even when they get to, if they do get to a play in, that, okay, we'll turn it on. Because it hasn't been on at all, you know, during this entire season when it needed to be on. So this is the frustration that Bulls fans have, are dealing with. The three-point shooting, man. It's a joke, and then it's a joke that's not funny. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. like you want to, you can't even laugh at it, but you laugh out of sadness. Yeah, you know, at it, man. You just laugh to keep from crying when you think about this three point shooting uh, of, of this team, how inconsistent it is, how bad it is, how lack of talent at people who can do that <laughs> that you don't have on this team. How you didn't go out and try to get people that can actually help you get to those levels on this team. So you just sit back and you watch it and you're like, well, no, I'm going to get a shooting coach. That can help. Yes, it can help. But you know what also will help is people who already know how to do it will also be great. It's like saying, man, you know, we want to be a team that plays better inside. I'm going to go get a coach that you can show us guys how to play inside. Sure, somebody else might get better, but you already can't do it. You're not automatically going to be great at it that first time out, right? One or two guys might be good, but you know what will be helpful? Get somebody who can play inside. Get somebody who's really good at those things, right? You would do that, right? Wrong. That's not what the Bulls have been doing. And the, the inconsistency behind the three-point line is not just a, you know, a, a one sharpened side of a knife problem. It's a both sharp sides of a knife problem yeah. because they can't defend. Yes. Three. Oh, my gosh. Right? Uh, shout out to Chase and Ashland in the comments. You said, seriously, are we really saying Billy Boy can't come up with something as a coach to defend the three-point shot when this keeps happening? Um, and I know that that will probably trigger something that you were, were talking about while we were watching this game tonight, Dave. But th that is why so many times this season we have talked about a hilarious point disparity behind the three-point line yeah. that the Bulls come out on the losing end of. Yeah. Tonight it was 36. Against Brooklyn on Friday, it was 48. Right. It's not only because the Bulls have these nights where they're like, hey, we're going to shoot uh, 24% mm -hmm. on a low volume of threes. Mm -hmm. We're also going to give up somewhere between 18 and 25 threes to mm. our opponent because mm. all season long, the Bulls have been one of the worst teams in the league at defending the three-point line. And it's like... <sighs> At some point, you have to wonder how the hell you can allow both of those problems to exist on one team. At the same damn time. You know what I mean? Like, it's glaring on both sides at the same time. The shooting and all of that, yes, you can put that directly on. Uh, you can say that was on the front office. Not getting people here who can do that. You know what I mean? That's fine. You can put it on the front office. Defending it, <laughs> I can look at the coach when it comes to that. 
And again, like I said, we're fair here about Billy. When he does something I don't like, you're going to hear about it, and you're about to hear about it. Because it was glaring as hell tonight. And not to say you're going to stop this team from some teams just going to heater. I get it. Yeah. It happens. But when your coach comes out and he talks about how he defends the three and how it's like, meh, you know, we're more concerned with, you know, getting that interior defense going, you know, than we are with guys at the three-point line. You know, the thing that everybody in the NBA is doing right now. It's, it's like saying, hey, man, play that CD. You're like, you know, nah, these eight tracks work just great. You know, like, man, nope, we're sticking with the eight track, guys. This is what we're going to roll with. But everybody listening to CDs now, Billy, man, you know what? Tapes are making a comeback. That's what's going to do. Let's stop that inside. But then your tape that don't work either. You know what I mean? So you're, you're asked on both sides of it. But the defense of the three point shot, it's maddening because your best defenders are guards. Mm -hmm. And when your best defenders are guards, that means you have to play to their strengths. And I don't think their interior defense as a guard-heavy team is a strength. I would think that it would be out there on the perimeter, whoever is out there shooting or defending or things like that, when you got a Caruso or when you got an Io or you got Torrey Craig even. You know, those guys are good out there on that perimeter, uh, uh, Daylon Terry even. Like, yeah, you put them out there on the perimeter and you try to guard the three and do something there. But to say you want to do it and be a more interior defensive team with Nikola Vucevic who was pure ass tonight <laughs> but when you, when you say that's what you want to do man dog that's that's where it gets maddening and frustrating for me because that that honestly makes no sense to me and hopefully somebody with better basketball knowledge can break that down for me uh William T in the comments saying five points from Vooch competitive continuity uh, yeah, there's a lot of Bulls fans who are getting on on Vuj's back tonight after that one, uh, which you know is understandable. Um, <laughs> it's not on Joe. <laughs> Jamie saying Vooch needs to go. They Come should around, not man. have signed him again. Come around, Henry again. Manahan saying, "Hey Vooch, you know what you got to do to rebound? Try jumping." Uh, well, we we've always known that Vooch isn't isn't much of a jumper. No, not his thing. The, even when uh, I think in the first half tonight, he had a nice like. Just dunker spot handoff uh, pass from one of his teammates, and he yeah. dunked it with authority, yeah. but yeah. It, his feet barely left the floor. Yeah. Um. As far as you know, hounding Vooch for his rebounding tonight, he I mean he did have 14 rebounds. He did. He's been slacking on the boards recently. I feel like yeah. he's had some rebound numbers recently where you're like, really, Vooch? Right. Really. Right. right. Uh. He, you know, he he gave him 14 tonight. Uh. In, in 31 minutes, Drummond gave him 18 in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um. But I. I mean, two of seven, <laughs> five points. Yo, <laughs> that I yuck. And then watch just it. yuck, Vooch. I am so done. <laughs> and then it's watching Billy take Drummond out and leaving Vooch in, and I, that's what I really didn't understand. You know, that really confused me a lot. And again, I'm watching Drummond. Drummond play. had a double double in nine minutes. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and to the point where I thought I asked Matt, "Wait, is it ten points and rebounds since that today?" And he was like, yeah, that's the one doing right now. He's doing that now. Wow. Also, in the last game when they played, he's has like 25 and 20. Yeah. So, obviously, he's doing something against this team. He has 13, 18 off the bench, which is crazy. I would want to leave that in and not go with the guy who is literally struggling tonight. And as soon as he took, takes Drummond out and we're watching him continue to struggle, the turnovers were ridiculous. The lazy fouls, which is just a hand slap, are ridiculous. Being beat down the floor by Fernando. <laughs> it's crazy. It hey, was man. crazy. He was bad, but you have to realize, hey, man, he ain't got it tonight. How about I switch that out and put somebody else in? Because you can't just say I'm leaving him in for shooting because he has six shots. Yeah. So what are you leaving him in for? I know it ain't interior defense, and I know it can't be rebounded because the other dude rebounded better. So I'm, I'm, I was very confused at that shit, too, also from Billy. Uh, Diesel 11 saying they protect the paint to help Vooch because we know that he's not a great rim protector. Sure. Hence, they can't get back and guard the three-point line, too. And that's true. I mean, that's the, but that, we, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead, I was go just going to go say, ahead. like, we've had nights this season where the, we see the Bulls' respectable rotations. Yeah respectable closeouts yeah but it is far more frequently the opposite yes where they are flying all over the place like chickens with their heads cut off trying to get these closeouts just because the team that they're playing has competent ball movement yes <laughs> and between trying to protect the paint so you can win your precious you know points in the paint battle yeah and and just not being fully 
like tib level discipline with your rotations, right. the rotations come up short and somebody ends with an open three. And that's it right there. That's where you, you're not getting killed or destroyed on the interior. They're, they're not great there. You know what I mean? But it's not where you're getting killed. You're getting killed at the three point line. So if I have to give it up on the interior, fine. I'll give it up on the interior because what's destroying you, what's hurting you, and the reason you're starting down nine points every game is because of the three-point line. That's what's killing you. You have to stop that. Cut that stuff out and then worry about this interior and helping Vooch down there and doing our other stuff, man. But you got to stop what's really hurting you, and that is the three-point shooting, bro. Easy, in my opinion. easy land in the comments saying, Vooch said in February, we have enough. So do we, Vooch. So do we. We have had <laughs> enough of you. Drew is saying even the Hawks announcers were questioning Billy on not getting Drummond in there sooner in the third. Billy did, however, start the fourth with his two big man lineup out there. He did. Vooch and Drummond. Which, again, on a night when you're losing the three-point battle this badly, to me, mm. is like, I, I, yeah, it is just. It's maddening. It, it, it's it's trying to fix the wrong problem. It's trying to fix the it's wrong so dumb. problem. It's, it's so hey, dumb. Matt, the car doesn't run. Oh, all right, man, put some air in the tires. No! no. <laughs> fix the car! Chris Davis saying this team is a reflection of coaching, not its talent. That's what drives me crazy. Uh, Chris, you are way only partly correct. This yeah. team is a reflection of everything that's wrong with his organization. Yeah, it's an all thing. We got to take our first break. We will come back, get to plenty more thoughts on tonight's game. We got to talk about the back half of Billy's rotation tonight, which was weird and puzzling in all kinds of ways. Uh, we will also hear from Will the Goat. Uh, so stick around for that. Hit that like button while we're sharing these words from our friends and sponsors. Make sure you also subscribe to that CHO Sports YouTube channel. Big mm. Dave, what do we got first tonight? I want to talk about Manscaped. And don't want to be too silly on this one because okay. I, I want to be honest about this, man. This episode definitely brought to you by Manscaped. But did you all know that one man every hour, every day is diagnosed with testicular cancer? In fact, testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer amongst men aged 15 to 35. So with April being National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, our friends over at Manscaped have partnered with testis the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. You guys can visit manscaped.com slash TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. And as always, and I mean as always, you can use the promo code BULLS for 20% off plus free shipping with Manscaped. At manscaped.com. Because with this in mind, you can perform the simple routine self-checks at home while enjoying your Manscaped products, man, that you use every day. You know, like that lawnmower 5.0 Ultra that is this man over here approved, y'all. So while you're over there taking care of yourself, cleaning yourself up, making yourself your groom correctly, make sure your health is on point, guys. There are definite ways to check for signs of testicular cancer that you can do right at home. You don't have to go to the doctor for but you can check and see if something is wrong down there on your own while you're cleaning it up and keeping it right, man. So, in addition to providing the right tools and solutions and comfort and easy grooming, Manscaped is committed to raising awareness and giving support for fighters, survivors, and families impacted by testicular cancer. That is why they will be donating $50,000 to Testicular Cancer Society, y'all. Right on. Help save lives and some balls. By going over to manscaped.com slash TCS and sharing their funny educational check yourself video. And while you're at it, grab 20% off and free shipping with that code, as I mentioned, bulls. Because like a famous American philosopher once said, take care of your mentals, your balls, and your chicken. It's great advice. Marshawn Lynch is the one who said that. <laughs> just letting y'all know. A true American philosopher. Oh, without a doubt. Those interviews were just amazing, dog. But shout out to uh, Manscaped for always caring and looking out. Indeed, indeed. Uh, quick interjection of the ad break. Bless mm -hmm. you, Joe. Uh, post game tonight also brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Mm. Um, if you were here from the start of post game, you may have seen me blow my lid. Literally and figuratively. 
Um, I, I, it was boiling. I've been having it up to here with this team for a while, a but bit. trying to maintain apathy because it's healthier and easier mm. than anger. Mm. The anger came out tonight. Mm-hmm. I mean, you almost needed the uh, the old the good old good old fashioned peg anger meter for oh, a second there, Joe. I miss it. Uh, <laughs> but it's okay because I just took a nice, refreshing, super icy cold sip mm. of my Coors Light, mm. my Coors Light cup right here, mm-hmm. and it helped a lot. Let me try. Whether it's your team stressing you out. Hello, me, oh. all the time. I'm the problem. It's me. Or just life in general can be stressful. Mm. Things can feel chaotic. Well, that's why Coors Light helps you find moments to chill mm-hmm. all year long. Mm. Whether you're stressing out about Bulls basketball or maybe you just want to go enjoy yourself at the ballpark. Baseball season's here. Yeah. I love that. South side, north side. Um, and especially once we get to those hot summer days and you're Ooh, watching baseball. Bleachers, huh? Then an icy cold Coors Light is even more refreshing. Mm. I don't know. You know, maybe they would have preferred like some some hot cocoa <laughs> in the bleachers today. <laughs> Brave <laughs> souls that were on either side of town tonight Man. or today for those Cubs and Sox games. Shout out to you fans. Man. Um, congr- Cubs got a W on their home opener. They did. Shout out to them. They did. Condolences to all you White Sox fans out there. Still oh, looking yeah. for W number one. Steel searching. While you're searching for that first W, Sox fans, take the pressure off with a nice cold Coors Light. Deserve when it. the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. Cold, Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filter, and cold packaged. First move their finish. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing, and cold as those Colorado Rockies. Mm. That's why when it's time to chill, Coors Light is a beer I reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door. Mm-hmm. That's right. We're talking beer delivery, y'all. That's right. With Instacart. Just by going to CoorsLight.com slash C-H-G-O basketball. That's mm. CoorsLight.com slash C-H-G-O basketball. Yes. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Uh, real quick, I did hear that jingle, but before that, I wanted to get to a couple more comments, Joe, that sure. I saw as we were entering our ad break because they were funny. Uh, <laughs> Matt Lennon just saying, we need more Vooch slander. <laughs> and Ant saying, the season is just about done. No reason Billy should be coddling egos. Bench Vooch. Mm. If you think the reason that Billy Donovan is still playing Vooch more minutes than Drummond is about coddling egos, you have got to zoom out, my friend. <laughs> Seriously. Because they are about to lose Andre Drummond in free agency yep. for nothing because yep. they insisted upon keeping him through the trade deadline. Correct. Whereas Vooch still has two more years and forty more million dollars guaranteed on his contract. That is what we're talking about here. It is not a coach coddling egos. It is a coach following orders. Mm. That's what it is. Mm. And that's not Billy's problem. That's the front office's problem, and it's the ownership's problem for not firing this front office. Mm. But, you know, your opinion's valid, too. Uh, <laughs> Joey, <laughs> shall we talk to the coach? Whale's here. That's where he's the coach. Joining us on that Go Talk hotline from the United Center Live, it's our guy, Will the Go Gottlieb. Follow him for all of his Bulls reporting and updates. Will underscore Gottlieb. Read his stuff, allchgo.com. Mm-hmm. Goat, math was not mathing tonight, and I am sick of it. How about you? I mean, again, the story of the night. It's like every other night, the Bulls either make their shots or miss their shots. And when they make them, they win. And when they miss them, they lose. And that's obviously pretty reductive, but it really does feel like that at some times where like, you know, the Bulls defense, as we've talked about a bunch, is kind of built to give up threes, right? They want to take away the paint. They want to put Vooch up to touch on these pick and roll actions to take away the drives because they feel like, okay, if we take away the passing or the driving lanes, that's going to remove those kick out for three opportunities. But the problem is, you know, if they don't contain on those, and and a lot of times tonight, DeJounte Murray or uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich were just turning the corner on Vooch then you're downhill, you're out of position, you've still got to scramble and rotate, and you don't have the rim protected. So um, I felt like it was just a lot of defensive lapses tonight that kind of resulted in the Hawks getting a bunch of good looks. I think also the, the Bulls didn't play that bad. I mean, I thought they got some good opportunities offensively. I thought for the most part, you know, they were trying to do their defensive principles and, and take away some shots, and there were just like some strong side, you know, threes in the corner that Billy Donovan was like, we just can't give those up. Like, those are the ones that we can try to remove. The other ones, like, we're okay doing that because at some at some points it's like you're going to give up a layup or you're going to give up a contested three. And it's just about can you get out there fast enough to contest. I think the Hawks moved the ball so well tonight that they got a lot of open looks. And to their credit, they made a lot of them. 
And when that happens, it's just really tough for the Bulls to math their way back into it, especially when they go, what was it, 7 of 28 uh, on threes. So, you know, 12 three-point discrepancy between the two teams. And, you know, as good as DeMar is at grifting and getting to the free throw line, as good as the Bulls are at generating offensive rebounds and drum and junking it up down there, um, as good as they are at just getting efficient offense because of how good DeRozan is, like, that can only get you so far because of how prolific teams are shooting the ball in these in this era of the NBA. So uh, when you go up 19, 23 is a game, it's just really hard to win. That's kind of the long and short of it. Well, can you take me inside of the thinking of leaving Vooch in, in, in that fourth quarter? Cause I, I know it's not coddling. I get that. It's not coddling. And I'm sure it has to do with matchups and all those other kind of things. But from a guy who's just sitting here watching it, it feels like one guy is playing better than the other one. And it's like one has 13 points and 18 rebounds right off the bench. The other one also has 13 rebounds, but he's got, what, six points? Five. Five points, excuse me. He's got five points on, on six shots, and his defense was just honestly, you know, non-existent, uh, especially uh, in that fourth quarter. There were, he got a couple of, you know, turnovers that I thought were terrible, but in a couple of touch fouls, which I hate when you're big mm. and getting touch fouls on, on the Free inside. Free-hand ones. Um, yeah, man, that, that was tough to watch. So can you take me aside the, the thinking as to leaving him out there in the fourth when it looked like somebody else was, was playing better than he was? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak for Billy on this one. Didn't hear what he had to say about it, uh, but I agree. I mean, I don't, I don't think Vooch played well at all tonight on either side. Obviously, two for seven uh, for five points. Did rebound it all right, but like Drummond was giving you that and more on the on the offensive end. Um, you know, they, he tried to play them together a bit, as we talked about last night. Like when you watch this team, I mean, it's like okay, you try to get on transition. If that doesn't work, then you pull it out and you try to get into like a flow offense, like Chicago action. Try to get somebody the ball heading downhill. When that doesn't work, you swing, swing, find Demar and let him cook. He either gets a basket or he gets fouled or he misses it, and you try to offensive rebound it. Like that's the Bulls' formula offensively and so he did try to play Vooch and Drummond together and really crash the glass and, and try to create some offense on the offensive glass um, I just don't think he has a lot to work with there and you know to Vooch's credit like I do think he he had some defensive lapses but I think he still executes within the scheme at a higher level than Drummond does uh, Drummond is playing you know shorter stints he's playing against backup bigs he's not always playing against starting caliber guards where he has to be up and contained so when you're watching those two do their job, it's not kind of an apples to apples thing. Like Drummond is out there containing against Kobe Bufkin and Vooch is out there containing against Bogdanovich or DeJounte Murray. It's a different game. Um, so I, I did think uh, Drum outplayed Vooch significantly tonight. Um, and I thought that they like had their best run in the second quarter when Drummond was in. I get why you'd want to try to go to both of them. Like the Hawks really struggled, um, you know, containing the offensive blast. So that's an area where you can exploit them. But uh, overall, yeah, I think, and that's why Drummond got up to 20 minutes. Usually he's around 12. So I do think he played Drummond probably more than he typically would. But um, yeah, I just, uh, at a certain point, like even, even your best players, if they're having an off night, like you, you want to be able to trust them to kind of get themselves back into the game because that's why you're paying them however many million dollars a year to do it. Uh, go. You, you know that I am apathetic about this ninth seed versus 10th seed battle uh, and think it's pointless and honestly would like to watch the Bulls slip to 10th uh, so they don't get a home game that they don't deserve. But I have to imagine that the Bulls players and Billy Donovan were fully aware of the stakes involved with this game tonight. Uh, having that lead that they were protecting over Atlanta to get that 9-10 play-in tournament game at home as opposed to going to Atlanta, and there seemed to be a certain lack of urgency out there by all players tonight. I'm wondering if Billy or any of his players that y'all were given access to after this game tonight addressed the fact that they just coughed up what they, I assume, saw as a very important game on their home floor. Yeah, you know, we talked to actually both coaches about this before the game, Billy and Quinn Snyder, and obviously they recognized that, you know, these teams are kind of on a collision course to play one another in the first round of the play-in. Um, I believe with Brooklyn's loss tonight, the Bulls clinched the play-in. So they will be uh, at least in it. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Like These teams are so good at doing this thing that I think it's really hard for just about everybody else to do, which is like really live in the moment. Like, Of course they want to win this game. Of course they feel like it's an important win to kind of give them some breathing room in this play-in thing. But like, they don't want to place more important on this game than the next one because they got to go out the next game and perform and the game after that and the game after that. So 
Um, they really do. Like, I know it's cliche and it's kind of frustrating at times to keep getting that same cliche answer. Like they really do, I think, see it as like a one day at a time, just like control what you can control, like do what you can do to win that game tonight. And, you know, I, I actually thought they, they came out strong. They got off to an 8-0 start. Like they were in passing lanes. They got up and down. And then at a certain point, it's like Big Creechy is hitting six threes. Like it's a little deflating. And um, again, that's that goes back to the math problem and kind of the the roster construction issue against these teams where you're just automatically in this three point deficit. Um, so even, even though you get off to an eight Oh run, that's the amount of points per game that you're giving up on threes. So it's really just a wash. And, you know, I think that's, that's just kind of a larger picture issue with this team. And I thought they stayed connected. I thought they, I thought they stayed involved and invested in the game, even when, you know, things weren't going their way. And then in the fourth quarter kind of unraveled a little bit, but, um, they obviously wanted to win this game, and I think that just kind of put some more fire under them to win as many more as they can. Now they're uh, 36 and 40, so uh, not too many, not too many more left, and everyone is going to count more because the Hawks are right on their tail. Yeah, and you all, you also said that incorrectly, but that's future bull Vit Crucci, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Dave, they can't afford him. They will make room. I'm telling you, man. That, they will make room for that young man. Somebody's going to not get that, that contract and everything. Restricted get free agent. Right behind for yes. <laughs> oh, he will be on this roster, sir. Everything about him says bull. <laughs> does it? Everything. Does it really? Everything about him says it. Oh, my God. And get here as it shoots 30%. <laughs> everything about him says it. It was amazing. Uh, uh, Will, before we let you go, thoughts on Kobe's game tonight? Not uh, another inefficient night from him shooting eight of twenty-one. He he had an okay night shooting last night on on a significantly low volume as far as Kobe's expectations, but another high minute total. He played thirty-nine minutes. We we saw him knock down you know a couple of threes, uh, inching closer by the way to that franchise record. But um, it seems like Kobe is still not all the way back from that hip injury. Are you are you reading it that way, even if Kobe won't admit it himself? Maybe a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, at times he can just be a little bit inefficient. He missed a couple of layups that you probably yeah. figure he makes on a typical night. He got blocked a couple of times, I think, by Capella. You figure maybe he makes one of those or just gets in the line instead. Um, but still had four free throw attempts, only two of seven on threes. So, I don't know. I think I think he was getting the right looks. I think he was playing the right way and just shots weren't falling. But that's true for pretty much everyone. I mean, even DeMar was 10 of 23. And I know he's struggled at times on the second night of back-to-backs. It's just that, like, you know, this team just does not have a lot of secondary creation. And so they try to manufacture ways to get it, whether it's offense or rebounding or post-ups or whatever it may be. Like, you would have loved to have a little bit more from Kobe. I don't like this because it felt like they, the Hawks really did only break it open in, in like, the mid-fourth quarter. Um, so yeah, maybe things are different if like a couple of shots fall, uh, and the percentages don't look that much different, but like the momentum kind of swings that way. So, um, you know, I don't think he's quite, he's not, he's obviously not playing at his highest level, but I don't think he's like doing wrong things out there or like making plays that, you know, he wouldn't have made before, um, just because his hip is not quite right. So I think it's possible that maybe he's not 1000% right. I think it's possible that maybe he's still trying to find his form. Uh, but I think he's been back long enough to where, you know, he's going to be playing through some bumps and bruises. Everybody is. But to me, it's like more of kind of a hot, hot and cold streakiness in terms of his shooting than anything else at this point. Bulls fans, be sure to follow our guy, Will the Goat, Will underscore Golly, for all of his Bulls updating and reporting. Make sure you read everything he writes, allchgo.com, and make yes. sure you are also a CHGO diehard if you aren't already, so you can get the best of the best including that GOAT 101 newsletter for diehards only. GOAT, we appreciate you, buddy. Get home safe out in that crazy rain tonight, and we will talk to you on Wednesday. Take care, guys. Peace. The GOAT. That's him. The GOAT! I know him. Uh, Let's take a second quick ad break. We'll come back, wrap up with some more thoughts on tonight's Bulls loss to the Hawks. Absolutely Mm. backbreaking. Could have just really clinched that ninth seed tonight. Man, clinch the play in. Wasted opportunity. Yeah. Oh, nothing like backing in. That's right. To clinching a play in spot beep, with a beep, loss at home to the beep. Hawks without Trey Young. Beep beep beep. Uh, beep, 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 beep beep beep. I was in the pool. Uh, <laughs> I like this comment from Charles Alty Bulls. Bulls clinched a play <coughs> in. That's spot. right. That's right. Yay for continuity and the competitiveness. 
it brings Hooray! the two C words that trigger me to no end. <laughs> Listen, man, defensive player of the year in this office is this light up, up here, dog. Dude, this, this set light has more man, blocks dog. than freaking <laughs> Victor <laughs> Wemiyama. No, oh, kidding? my goodness. Uh, uh, what do we got, Dave? Troll Joe. Mm. Two questions. One, who you got in the final four? Uh, Purdue. Purdue. Troll Joe. Also, what time is it? Game time. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have to worry. When it comes to you, sorry, that threw me out was awesome. You, you think Troll Joe and, and Braggs are in cahoots? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I that, feel like oh. those can never, those two can never meet. Oh, my goodness. It would Braggs explode. and Troll Joe? Well, somebody's coming out without films. Yeah, so I'm sure that. <laughs> Some sort of a terrorist attack me. would happen. <laughs> he said it won't be me. <laughs> you should have to worry when you find your tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events. There's you with Killer. Last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying those tickets. Game time has deals on tickets for up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts, it is not the place, no sir. It is the place to find last minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, hockey, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. And with those own deals, you pick the section, and game time does the selecting for an average savings of. 18%. Woo. And the game time guarantee means you'll always, and I mean always, get the best price. So, take the guesswork out of buying those tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use that code CHGO. Get yourself $20 off your first purchase. Terms pie. Terms pie. That's CHGO. Get yourself $20 off your first purchase. Terms pie. Terms pie. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Because I've got it. Get it out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, we have fun. Colin in the comments asking for a CHO Bulls and CHO Bears crossover. Um, Ooh. I mean, we've, we've dabbled. Yeah. With internet with one that? another, yeah. Um, I I, I, uh, I had a nice fun chat with uh, Adam Hogue for I think one of the first ever CHO Tavern styles. The first Ooh, tavern awesome. style. The very first. The very first. You guys had the pizza. Hi, in there. Oh yeah, that's right. I've uh, I've also brought Mark Carmen on CHO mm -hmm. Bulls before because we know diehard Bulls fans. Yes, and we've both been on uh, CHO Bears. This podcasts. is true. Yeah, so we. I was things. doing the the live uh, watch party with the live watch along on mm -hmm. their first W of the season Thursday yes. Night Football with yes. our guy Herb. You absolutely did. I'll take credit for that. Yes, you shall. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I feel like I think Bull, Bulls fans are, well, we'll see what happens in this play-in tournament. I feel like Bulls fans are entering a, an offseason of lots of questions, not expecting lots of answers, and, and a certain level of darkness, at least some of us. Whereas Bears fans, I think, have gotten past, or at least I hope Bears fans have gotten past, the darkest part of their most recent and current timeline mm -hmm. where Bears fans on Twitter were just fighting each other, like waging war about the quarterback controversy. And yeah. now it's like, okay, Justin's been traded. Yeah. They're taking Caleb with the number one pick. It's happening. It's happening. Let's all move forward yes. and be excited about the fact that the Bears are actually looking like a team that's set up to have a decent shot at being, I don't want to use the C word. So let's just say good next season. Champions. Like I'm gonna say, I'm not scared of none of this. All right, this is what what the hell we're here to break. I don't <laughs> want to drag Bears fans, myself included, down. Uh -huh. So I feel like Bears fans' vibes are high right now. Sure, we're less than a month away from the draft. Sure, things are good. Yeah, excited about some of the moves that Poles has made in the offseason. Very excited. As a Bears, as a Bulls fan, mm -hmm. I am more depressed than I've been in a long time. Ooh, that's saying a lot. I don't want to mix those things. That's saying a whole lot. I just want my Bears optimism to be my Bears optimism, mm -hmm. and let's just. Deal with the Bulls maybe sometime later if I feel like it. Adam Oak said it on excited. the CHO Bears show the other day. The odds are slightly in favor of the Bears making the playoffs. Yes. That's the are. way the odds are swinging. I'm not afraid to say these things, man. This is what we got to get over. Like, this stuff, like, and I love what Ryan Poe said. We said, this is what they brought me in here to do was break certain curses. You know what I mean? Like, this is what exactly what I'm here to do is to change things. This is the change. Don't just say it. Talk about it. Be about it. He's being about it. He's doing stuff I ain't never seen a bear front office do. Ever. None of us have ever seen this. All right? This is all new and very, very exciting. I can't wait to see 
how it turns out and other things that they do. I'm just excited. I'm excited, man. Let's go, man. We're about to be good. Love those odds. Let's go. Uh, and, and Charlie in the comments, I did mean that C word. That, <laughs> that is the one I was referring to. But I don't want to put that evil on the Bears right now. Mm. Put that, that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> what do you put? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We only got halfway through our ads. Yes. I was gonna. That's what I was talking about. You know the odds. Yes. No, I heard right, you, right, Joe. Right, right, I heard right. he tried. I thought Joe was yeah, yeah, yeah. Segway, He was segway. bringing you back around. <laughs> like, yeah, he was trying to be Segway Joey. Uh, Post case tonight also brought to you by our Joey friends segway. at Circa, mm-hmm. offering those tight money line splits and using their low hole model, always striving to have those starting odds for game spreads, point total over unders, player props, or whatever else at minus one ten. Unlike a lot of other sports books these days, who are pushing those starting odds to minus one fifteen or minus one twenty for no good reason at all jerks nah circa is going to keep that minus 110 value right where it belongs for you they also keep as little money as possible on large market bets i.e futures bets i.e nba season long awards i saw some more of y'all in the comments just a few minutes ago talking about kobe and whether or not that most improved player award is kind of slipping from his grasp Mm. with this recent downswing Mm. um i did see the bulls to their credit bulls pr uh put out a great video promoting kobe's candidacy for the most improved player award uh, a couple days ago very well uh, done. very well done you had some of the other head coaches in the nba mm-hmm. uh, either before or after their matchups with the bulls talking about the growth they've seen from kobe and how they are trying yep. and and it's a greater challenge to game plan for kobe's offensive yes. growth this season the players as well uh, while also you know uh, mixing in some of the statistical improvements he's made this season that are Chris substantial Paul. <laughs> um, so you, you love to see that. So maybe you think that Kobe still has an outside shot and you want to put a bet down on that. Do it at Circa because that's where you're going to get the best value on those ki- kinds of bets. They also don't limit their players based on winnings. So even uh, those winning players on those hot streaks, you have the same limits unlike other books who limit their winning players, their hot players. Uh, also at Cir- Circa, they have the best unparalleled customer service. Real people behind that Circa Sports brand who resolve any issues you might have in a timely fashion, unlike most of those other sports bettors and sports books these days who use the dreaded chatbot. Uh. Humans will win <laughs> in the battle of, of the bots. Of bots versus man. Uh, all yeah, aspects yeah. of the Circa app are being run by the same team that run their main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Vegas. Download that Circa Sports Illinois app at circusportscom slash Illinois dash app mm-hmm. to sign up today. Be on the lookout also for their various events, watch parties and tailgates. Shout out to their Waukegan Circa, who uh, hosted a really fun event the first day of March Madness for uh, some, some Big Ten talks, some CHGO Bears action. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looked like a lot of fun. If you or someone you know may have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. Text GAMB to 8 Three two three four. Or visit are you really winning dot com. You mm-hmm. also we were talking about Kobe said he got the Sub Zero shirt from the CHO nice. locker. Love that. Shout Let's out. Go. There it is right there, guys. Available right now. Make sure you get that on your body. You will look awesome and you will look wonderful and radiant. Matter of fact, where to the draft party that's going on? Uh, yes, indeed. I think I saw somebody else asking. Was it Colin? Colin. Colin was asking. Asking earlier, is anybody from CHO Bulls going to go to the Bears CHO Bears draft party? I I'll, think I think I'll go. Yeah, I'm playing. So probably. On going. Uh, th- I'll be there. I mean, Thursday night, pick mm-hmm. one. Yeah, round one, pick one. Feel like that's something that we got to be there for. Yeah, it's big, man. Exactly, and, and they got two picks in the first round. And here's, that's here's true. all I'm going to say. What are going to do with yeah. number nine? Yeah. If you want to go and be part of that Thursday celebration, you better get your tickets soon because they are. F- I I think they said there's single digit tickets left. So mm. wow, yeah. Well, I mean, it is a bar that has a max capacity, mm. so. Grab your spot quick before they run out. Do this, guys. You can find it uh, under the events tab of our website, Mm -hmm. allchgo.com. A bunch of different great deals, including an all-you-can-drink package from 7 to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, the first night of the draft uh, with all kinds of different beverage options. And, I mean, 50 bucks, all you can drink for three hours. This guy. Challenge accepted. You can do it. Uh, And, of course, UCHO diehards get a discount on that ticket. Awesome. Uh, shout out to Charlie who said he's got the Sub Zero Hurt shirt and the hoodie. My man. Uh, only reason I'm getting through this season. I think you're not alone yeah. in that regard. Yeah. I, I mean, I, for me, it's like Kobe and Io. Yes. And then the occasional Caruso game where I'm like, Caruso, you crazy SOB. <laughs> um, and then, of course, also, you know, 
all of you, Bulls Nation. Yeah. We help each other get through seasons Correct. like this. Without and, a doubt, uh, man. I, yeah, I, it's need necessary. Yeah. It is necessary. We need y'all, and we appreciate y'all <laughs> so, so much, man. Seriously. It keeps us going. It really does. Knowing that there are other people out here just as insane as us as far as actually sitting and watching this team and just sitting and taking it all in game after game after game after game. We appreciate, you know, mis- the misery loves company. And we appreciate all the company <laughs> that we get from you guys, man. And the laughter and joy that we get from you as well and that we hopefully give you all sometimes. So I mean, they're, they're 36 and 40. Yeah. And they've been the equivalent of 36 and 40 since Lonzo got hurt two and a half years ago. That's, that is so factual. I feel like I am stuck. Yeah. I yeah. feel like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. Is that a worse feeling than being the clear worst team? Then feeling like you're know. stuck in the it's middle. It's just like a different flavor yes. of bad. Okay. It's worse. It's worse. I, yeah, go ahead, Joe. It's worse. I mean, what would you... I mean, it's a year-to-year thing, mm-hmm. but if you were the worst team last year and mm-hmm. then you end the season and you're staring Victor Wembanyama, that number one pick in the face, or it's next right. year and you're staring Cooper... Like, it's a direction. Mm-hmm. It's a direction. Look at some of the... T- like, or you got to be bad, I think, in a lot of cases. If you, if you want to get that guy, you got to... You just, there's no shortcuts. So, like, I, th- I think I mostly agree with you. I think when they did the Jimmy trade, mm-hmm. Bulls fans knew what we were up against. Yeah. Like, okay, we're starting over. Starting over. And it's clearly. probably going to be rocky. Yeah. And then it stayed rocky Balboa. a little longer than I think Bulls fans wanted to. Yeah. Bulls fans are impat- impatient, especially those of us who grew up just winning the championship every year. That was me. Which was lots of fun. <laughs> um, but the thing that I think some of us can compartmentalize and make peace with when you go through a rebuild or when Mm -hmm. your team is young and is about development and stacking L's and stacking lottery ping pong balls for a season or two is you know that. Mm -hmm. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of optimism for growth with Mm -hmm. this, we're going to run it back a third time season Mm -hmm. of lots of the same pieces. Yeah, That's harder to psych yourself up for. It was demoralizing and, and not just demoralizing but devastating when when you tell yourself all right i know that we're going through a rebuild and it's about young talent developing it and mm. probably racking up a bunch of l's while also keeping an eye on that draft and then like when we did the draft lottery watch party between seasons one and two of outsiders sure. and we watched that bulls placard come up seven. at the seventh pick uh-huh I mean, like again, it was caught on camera. Yes. You, me, and Sabine were sitting there in that bar. You spilled your beer on my shirt. I my spilled shirt. my beer on your shirt because <laughs> I had a heart attack. Yes, you did. Of absolute crushing devastation. Yes. It was like in that moment, I felt like the slow mo rewind of Ralph Wiggum getting told by Lisa Simpson, like, yeah. I don't love you. <laughs> you can see you in can that see exact his moment yeah. when his yeah. heart breaks into a million <laughs> pieces. When you're hoping for that payoff moment yeah. and it doesn't come. That makes the rebuild seasons harder. But yeah, there is yeah. a purpose to it. I mean, perfect example, the jubilation we all got to watch our CHO Blackhawks crew experience Sure, when they got the number one pick and the right to draft Connor Bedard. Sure, sure. That's the plan the Bulls tried for a couple mm-hmm. years, and they failed at it. Very bad. They, they failed at it several times. Uh, Sean you know, Kill I mean, draft you, pick. You, you know I hate losing. Like It's just not something I'm programmed to accept. And I understand it in certain cases. Like when you tell me your, your clear vision is we're going to rebuild, that's different. You're telling me you've chosen a path. Okay, there's your path. You're going to rebuild. We're going to start this over. We're going to do this right. But the difference with this one, Matt, is, and what I think is more frustrating, I don't think it's because they're in the middle. It's because they are wanting to stay there. And I think that's the difference and because they've had opportunities to kind of do something to maybe lift them out of that. And they haven't taken, taken uh, those steps to get them out of that position. So that's why I don't mind the middle, because when you're there, you're supposed to be making the moves to help lift yourself out of that middle. And that's the frustrating part. Right. They have not done that part is make the right moves and the competent moves and the moves that everybody can see that you need to make to get yourself out of that position and then elevate yourself and then move forward with that. That's what's the frustrating part of being in the middle is they're comfortable with it. It's not being there. It's the fact they're cool with it. 
Right. That's the frustrating part, dude. And I, and I think it's because it's been now three consecutive years yeah. where you see where your team is two-thirds of the way through the season, yeah. a.k.a. the trade deadline, Yeah, leading up to it. Two-thirds of a season is plenty enough of a sample size to know what you have yeah. and what you might need or want yes. to do in the final third of the season. Right. In season one of this experiment, of this roster that AK and Eversley constructed, I think Bulls fans were maybe frustrated knowing that Lonzo went down and didn't know if he was coming back, and right. that team like looked like it was good, but not good enough. We understood what they Because they were high in the East standings, but they were mostly losing to the good teams and yes. beating the bad teams. Destroying them. And we're like, okay, this team might be a first-round playoff exit. Right. Maybe if they get the right matchup, they can get to the conference semis. That's their ceiling. Right. And they sat there and did nothing mm -hmm. and said, we're good. Mm -hmm. Then they did it again last season when I think a lot of Bulls fans were saying, this ain't it. <laughs> Maybe start selling off some of the pieces you can get value for and reorchestrate this roster this offseason, but start now mm -hmm. when people are throwing you offers for things. Mm -hmm. And then it was absolute deja vu of the same thing happening this year. Yeah with the exact same middling results, yeah. just one year fast-forwarded into the future. Yeah. And you're like, each time they decided to do nothing, it made less and less sense. That part. That part. And it makes, and, and you're right, it makes it seem like they are okay mm -hmm. with where they are, yeah. which is being just okay, barely okay. Yeah. That's the part that I think drives fans crazy. Yeah, and, and Colin, I think that's the C word, is content. And just being okay with that. And that will always be the forever frustrating part. For me, it's not being that middle. I would rather do middle than lab because all I think of is teams like the Charlotte Hornets. That's Oof. who I think of all the time, Oof. who are always in the draft, who Oof. always got a high draft pick, who always got somebody everybody says, oh, they're going to be the one, and they can't put it together ever, ever. They're not, they can't put it together. They'll go to the playoffs one year, and, and then that's it. You know what I mean? Then they're back to the bottom, then they're back in the draft. And then they're drafting that player, and then it still doesn't help. It's the same thing. It's the same vicious cycle because losing is a very hard stank to get off of you. You can change it with a generational player, but those are few and far between, which is why they're called generational players. You can change it with that. A good draft pick, you cannot do that. A good draft pick, you have to build more stuff around. Generational, you will change the mentality. Look at the Spurs. You know what I mean? Look at LeBron. Look at whoever – Whoever you want to consider a generational talent, just look at what they've done. I mean, it starts mentally with that. Look at what Minnesota has done adding Anthony Edwards. Again, mentality. In Correct. a few years. The uh, mentality. Like, oh, yeah, no, we're just like a top seed in the West now. Yes. That, and that's his mental. He's, mm -hmm. he's insane. Yep. You know what I mean? And he wants to win like that. It changes with that mentality. Not good, but a great mentality. So the Bulls were in a position to actually do stuff. To move themselves out of it. That is, again, the frustrating part, ladies and gentlemen. We know what you needed, and they wouldn't get it. Or when they, instead of getting it, they got a generic-ass version of it. And, and said, well, maybe this will tie you over. You know what I'm saying? So, and it didn't work. Okay, let's go get Dragic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wait, what? No, you don't need. You need some three-point shooting, dog. Okay, you know what? Let's try it with Javon Carter. Okay, I, I need an actual shooter. Like, can we get shooters out here? You know what? Do it at the trade deadline. Nah, we cool. We're standing pat. You know what I'm saying? We don't need that. Nah, we're cool. Let's go get Patrick Bev, and we'll move on. We'll be fine with that. Guys, it's that lack of recognition about what you have. You know what I mean? And, and just being saying we're all right with what we got because I think that we're better than that, even though everything continues to show you that you're not. That's the frustrating-ass part, guys. And – uh you know, we we were having some jokes uh, tonight, you, me, and Joey, about a certain uh, person who has a certain fear of a certain luxury tax. Um, <laughs> the monster, and, and we, you know that, and that, and that's the the hilarious but also confusing part about this is if they are truly content with what this team is, which is a maybe they win their way to an eighth seed from the playing tournament, and maybe they don't kind yeah. of team, which is what it's kind of looking like for consecutive years now. Yeah then to keep that squad together this summer, mm -hmm. they are going to need to sign contracts that would then trigger them to be an above the luxury tax team. Yes. That is when this gets real interesting. Ooh, because it's wait. like, how content are we with being mediocre? Exactly. Despite how many times we say the opposite publicly to the media and our fan base, mm -hmm. oh, we're not okay with mediocrity, parentheses, we're super okay with it. Are you still okay with it if to keep this roster that 
ceilings out at mediocrity together, you need to enter the luxury tax? Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, the answer to that question for the people whose opinions and say so matter is Mm -hmm. a big fat no. Yeah. Yeah. They have repeatedly said, we will pay the luxury tax for a championship contending team. Yes. This ain't that. It ain't that. It ain't close to being So if you're not going to pay the luxury tax to keep this bum-ass mediocre squad together, maybe actually make some real changes. This is going to be an interesting offseason, man, and one I'm looking forward to because it it plays to, honestly, what you want also, Matt, which is putting feet to the fire. Yes. You know, and saying, okay, now go ahead and make your choice. You're against the wall now. All your things are cut off that can pull out here and save you because you have to make this tough decision. What do you want to do? You've got to make a decision, and you better make the right one <laughs> at, on top of that. You can't just make a cop-out one. They're not going to allow you to do the cop-out one. That would mean they pay more money. They're not doing that. You have to make these decisions, man. What you going to do? And I can't wait to watch that because I enjoy the fact that it's there. You lo- do, how much do you love Lonzo Ball? How much do you want to keep Lonzo Ball? Do you still believe he'll be back next year? Do you think they want to keep paying him and give him another 20 mil to do that? At this point, it's not how much do you love Lonzo Ball. It's how much are you in love with the idea of Lonzo Ball. Yeah, (laughs) great point. You're not in love with me. You're in love with the idea (laughs) of me. Of what I could be. (laughs) You're in love with my potential of what I could be. I just think I can fix you. (laughs) Is is that worth $20 million to you? (laughs) Like, we'll find out. That's That's why this is so just compelling for me this offseason is really compelling because they have no other choices ladies and gentlemen they got to make moves and let's not forget the zach levine trade that's got to come as well yeah oh my god Ooh, I a lot mean, of stuff gonna happen. optimistic bulls fan in the comments just said let tomorrow walk ride with zach uh, <laughs> yeah. this is what I, i'm saying man i have already in my brain told myself that zach is gone yeah we also we saw Zach tonight, and I'm and yeah. I was gonna say that's the crazy. Like we saw Zach sitting there on a yeah. bench. He was back in town. Uh, I Patrick Williams was also back with he the was. team for the first time he in a was. while. We saw him on the bench in street clothes. But it's even as someone who was an advocate for the Zach contract back when Bulls fans were fighting Ditto. about it, because I still think it made the most sense of still. their limited options. Agree to sign him to that deal. We well, agree. As soon as he said in November, "Yeah, I'm open to a trade." Subtext: Trade me, please. Yes. I have been, I have moved on. And between that and then him saying that and then getting hurt yep. and then only coming back for a handful of games and getting hurt again, I am I am my brain is so far yeah. removed from Zach Levine right now. Yeah. And Correct. now you kind of like, oh, that's still something they have to figure out this yeah. season. Still something they gotta do. No, I was with you, Matt. The moment you put, you know what I'm saying, words to it, and then not only words, I think you're putting action to it because I'm watching the way you play. So I'm looking at both those things. Yeah. You're right. You're out of out of sight. You're out of mind. Like I forgot about it all the time. Yeah. But I know that at this season, you still have to make that decision of the trade. And what do you want to trade him for? Because the league told you what he's worth. They've shown you. Said you. They we ain't giving you that. <laughs> what do you want for him, man? Who do you keep? Who do you believe in? Who do you like? You got to make decisions, man. And I like it. <laughs> and I like it so much. I like it. Uh, can we get a bag of Funyuns? That- <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Family size? <laughs> uh, yeah. Verbal abuse? <laughs> Smack on the head. <laughs> Julia said, yes, exactly, man. Zach is a memory. Yeah. Connor saying, I legitimately forgot Zach was still on this team for a sec. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, Stuart, meanwhile, on the other side of things, saying, I'd keep Tamar and Dre. Goodbye, Zach, Vooch, Javon, Pat, even. Mm-hmm. Well, those are... Very different things. Um, yeah. we, we did get a, a brief Javon Carter signing off we the bench did. tonight. He yipped it up. Can I <laughs> say one thing? Please do. It, and I, we don't have to go all the way into this because we don't have time. But, okay. but we talk about direction and mm. the frustration of watching this team. And we've said it before, but, I mean, can anybody imagine this season without Kobe and Io? Mm-mm. And what it, what, how brutal it would be. It, I mean, it like, it, it's it's bearing the like that those were two huge things and it's still but i just it that really has saved uh and salvaged a lot of the competitiveness and and just made it watchable but i i really can't even imagine what that would have been like no, yeah you're absolutely right no i'm i mean if it weren't for kobe's early flourish this season you know like you said and, and you always say he started Rocky out of the gate. Yeah. But then he got hot in like early December or whatever, so even did. November. Yeah. If it weren't for that, and then the way that Iowa has also played this season, 
I, I would have taken the black and gone to work on the wall. Like, I <laughs> truly. Like, we love this job. We truly do. But as a Bulls fan, I am so burnt out right now. Mm-hmm. We all said, hopefully just a temporary farewell to our friend Mark K mm-hmm. when he and Will had their, their last HQ episode uh, late last week. Because Mark is taking some time to be a family man and focus yes. on other things. Yes. Congratulations again to him. Absolutely. He and his better half just welcomed their second child. Awesome. Um, but another valid reason that Mark shared publicly with his fellow Bulls fans for taking a step back from CHGO Bulls is that he as a Bulls fan is just done right now. He's sick of it. And I'm like, yeah, Mark, I've been there for a while too, but like I can't. <laughs> It's my job. And I won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, speaking of other Bulls fans who keep me as sane as possible and make me not want to drown myself in Lake Michigan. But it's um, it's, it's a tough road, man. True. Honestly, it's a tough road to, and a tough place to be in because it's maddening because you see the changes that can easily be ha- happening. And can easily be made to make you slightly better basketball team than what you're seeing now. And they won't make those moves and then insult your intelligence on top of that as to why they won't make those moves. So it's all of that compounded to what will break a human being. You know what I mean? Like you see what they should be doing, and in your face they're telling you, no, yeah. no, we shouldn't do that. Nah. No, we shouldn't do that. No, you no, you, you're bleeding. You, you need to put a band-aid on. Am I bleeding? <laughs> hey, Sanka, you dead, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Should I? Like, it's, it's those things. It's the insulting of the intelligence and also seeing the moves that aren't being made. Yeah. Will just drive you bananas. But it, it, again, you know, you can, uh, you can already hear AK in his end of season press conference talking about certain wins that this team yeah. had this season. He's going to say it. And their record in clutch games. He's going to say it. And he... Mm. See? See what I mean? This is what the man stuff is. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is what gets frustrating and it makes you mad and makes you upset with it, man. Truly. But yes, thank y'all for uh, joining us for all of shout, that. Shout out to Colin who said, I want to be sunny side burnt out on, on top of my Bulls fan burnt out. That's what I'm talking about. That's right, baby. Come on, Colin. Ooh, our sunny side summer Fridays are just so close to being back. On the way. Uh, Chase and Aslan saying, Matt and Dave for real. I feel like Kobe and Io have both regressed quite a bit as far as shooting goes. They just aren't hitting twos or threes with the kind of consistency they were before. Would you agree? I would not I, agree. I would not. Especially about Io, I wouldn't say that. No, dude, Io's been shooting the three confidently. Yeah, yeah. He's had a couple of small lulls this season, but yeah. for the most part, Io has taken his three-point shooting to a undeniably better level this season than yeah. it was in his first two NBA seasons. Yeah, without a doubt. And man. then in Kobe's case, yeah, we've acknowledged that he has not shot the ball well coming back from his hip injury. Mm-hmm. He was four of six from downtown last night. Yep. I think he was, what, two of seven tonight? Yep. So not as, but like, no. I, w- I would not agree that Kobe and Io have regressed with their shooting. Yeah, I haven't seen that at all, man. Like, yeah, having a bad game, you know what I'm saying, is a little di- different from going 10 straight games and going two for 20. Yeah. Three. That's a regression. You know what I mean? You know what regression is? It's Vooch since the Bulls traded Ooh, for him. That's, that's regression. Regression. Uh, that's a regression, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. Can you I hear regression? Show me is, regression. Is my mental health <laughs> for the last decade plus as a Bulls fan. That's deterioration. <laughs> Tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are out of time for now. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, tough back-to-back that yeah. was. Woo, yeah. doggy. It's okay, though. It's mm. okay, because the Bulls still, by the slimmest of margins, have that ninth seed in home court in the play-in. And even with a loss tonight, Locked officially in. clinched themselves clank, clank. a play-in tournament appearance. Hooray, hooray. Right. AK, pop that bubbly, buddy. You did it. <laughs> Clinch the play-in for the second straight year. <laughs> I hate my life. Uh, <laughs> shout out again. One more reminder to follow our guy, Will the Goat. Will mm-hmm. underscore Golly for all of his Bulls reporting. AllCHGO.com is where you can read his stuff. Sign up to be a diehard to get that Goat 101 newsletter. Shout out and appreciation to our pound producer, Joey, on the controls, at Joey Spathers. That's him. Big Dave is at Bow, BWL Sports. That's I me. am Bulls underscore Peck. We are That's CHGO him. underscore Bulls. Bulls are off until Friday. Ooh. Maybe get a couple of, uh, you know, That's punch right. clock practices in there. We'll That's see. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we, so we are going to be off tomorrow, but then we will be back with y'all 
Wednesday and Thursday with live podcasts to uh, lead you and carry you over to that game on Friday. Which, by the way, Knicks Bulls Friday. First of three remaining games against the Knicks. Three of their last six against the Knickerbockers. Uh, Shout out to the last minute super chat from Samuel Martin, who said, one day the Bulls will be good for the inside crew. We'll see. Hopefully. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing for the fact that that will never come again. One day it will be, Samuel. I'm prepared for the fact that it's coming. Uh, Oh, it's coming. Appreciate y'all, Bulls Nation. Hang in there. We will talk to you on Wednesday. Until then, T-Red, be good. Peace. Peace.